Royal Alloy. The first time I saw this scoot, I immediately thought, hey, Lambretta in its whole classic form. This naturally piqued my curiosity because I spotted this in Eichma in Milan, Italy a couple of years ago. That's the biggest moto expo in the world where they showcase new releases and upcoming bikes. It got me excited because I thought they were coming back with reissues and I mean motorcycle brands rarely do reissues of their older models. So when I got to get a closer look I found this to be partly and somewhat true. Let's go. As I approached the booth and took a closer look, I found out that Lambretta actually had nothing to do with this scoot, except inspire the owners and fuel them with nostalgia. So what happened was, in the mid-2000s, a couple of Brits who were known in the Lambretta restoration scene and racing community produced a few Lambretta Series 3 replica homage scooters. So this became a hit in the community. People loved their work, and because of what they did, they said, we've got to get into mass production and show how the world will pay homage to the brand. In English, they said, we've got to get into mass production here and show how we pay respect and homage to a classic brand. So they approached motorcycle manufacturer Hanway Motors, who in turn invested heavily into the project. And by 2015, one of the first mass produced models rolled out of the factory. Somewhere in there, squabbles happened, a court case ensued between Hanway and the Brits, long story short, short, Hanway won and they parted ways. Then other Brits entered the picture to continue development of the brand and to push Royal Alloy globally. Two factories produce Royal Alloy nowadays, one is in China and the other is where we get our scoots, Thailand. What we have now is the Royal Alloy Tigara Grande 300S or simply the 300 TGS priced at 295,000. Engine has some 278cc moto muscle producing 16.6 kilowatts or 22 horsepower at 7,250 RPM with 23 Nm of torque. It is fuel injected clearing Euro 4 standards, it is fully automatic and liquid cooled. And unlike its contemporaries, this is not made out of plastic. We have double hydraulics for the suspension out front and at the rear we have two shocks. For brakes at this level we have ABS front and back so bravo. Wheels are 12s, we have LED lights so you know we got a lot of modern amenities here tucked in a classic package and I'm sure even the purists can't deny this is actually very practical. But to a purist, being practical is not part of their shopping criteria, but it's just how they roll. So a royal alloy may receive some upturned noses by these folks, but even purists can't deny on how a royal alloy may play up in their minds. Imagine a classic looking bike with modern amenities, yeah? Now, how can you not appreciate this beautiful work of art, huh? Royal Alloy has arrived. Oh man, look at that. So this whole thing, it's made of metal. You got your Lambretta-esque body. 
going on here all right so um i mean take a good look it's a beautiful scooter this is the Tigala Grande 300S. So straight off the bat, quality wise, it's very, very primo, if I may say. The levers are pretty good quality. Very good lever over there, this too. Our little mirror, I'm usually very anal about mirrors, but I think this is befitting. I know you could probably get better ones, but for the sake of originality and sticking to it, it's look fits this, I think, my opinion. This, however, I think would have been better if it maintained some sort of classic lines because this looks very, very modern amongst everything else because this looks very classic. Bar end over there, bar end over there. I like how the, the grip is bigger and fatter in the middle, complementing your palm. Now, let's take some time to appreciate the key of the Royal Alloy. This is nice and weighty. Look at it. It is beautiful. Now, oh, that's attention to detail. Firing this thing up, RA, a real classic, pops up in its TFT display. You know, if you're gonna go for something classic looking, might as well go classic all the way. I mean, why put something modern in this classic looking setup, right? There's gonna be a bunch of you who are gonna be saying that, and there's gonna be a bunch of you who can appreciate this, saying that I want the amenities and the convenience of modern technology, and I want, at the same time, classic look so i can see how this can happen so what's nice about this is it is touchscreen so if you hit mode long you're going to be setting up your resetting your trip and if you press set you can transfer from miles to kilometers so if you press set long enough you can now adjust the date basically what you see here you got your fuel gauge you got your trip time, you got your trip one, you got your date, you got your speedometer, you got your RPM. You even have the temperature outside, you have the time, and you have Bluetooth connectivity for your phone. It's as modern as you can get as far as displays go. Now, I feel that it would be a good idea for Royal Alloy to provide another version of this scooter wherein it's gonna provide an all analog display. I mean, that would just complete the whole analog look not to say that it's a bad thing what they put here but i mean if you're talking about catering to the vintage guys to those who are into classic looks who will consider something modern at the very least keep it as close to classic as you can i mean visually speaking of course the engine we're now four stroke we are fuel injected it is an automatic but that's not something you see right away right with a gauge you'll see this right away you'll see the royal alloy thing light up right there and then if we start it Oh, sorry, side stand. It's got a kill switch on the side stand. It's up. It's LED all the way. So that's great. That is our signal light over there. Signal light, nice bullets. And uh, for our brakes, that's what you get. That's pretty much what it sounds like. 278cc here. Single overhead cam, 278cc, pretty good deal here. A lot of power for this little scoot. The seat is very, very good. It's very, very prime. Quality is really, really, really good. Now let's take a look at what is under the seat. You simply just go to the side. You have this nicely made switch. Press it and check it out. Ta-da! There is no space. <laughs> quality that's what it looks like yeah that's why you have a rack you can put your bag over here you can put another box and it is pretty st sturdy and solid okay i just want to give you a quick quick tip over here as you can see you got some scuff marks on the nice paint job because of these rubber cushion you can see the scuff marks so how do you prevent that for some people they don't really care but through time this can actually eat through the paint and get into the metal and eventually cause rust so what can you do to sort that out what i discovered is you can buy 3m double adhesive tape peel out just one side put it on there put it on there and leave the other side with the plastic nylon and keep it there so that's going to protect your paint and it's not going to sacrifice all of that in terms of dampening and keeping it secure so look at it now while i think that it would be nice to have some chrome trim if i were to own this i would black out this chrome i would black that out i would black this out and i would black this out this too i would black out so this is not a monocoque frame as some people wrongly assume it's got a chassis underneath just like what you would have with a lumbretta so in line with that aspect they're the same okay so let's check out the storage space over here and that is what you get. So, got some charging power over here, USB port, 
that's very handy uh huh oh interesting you got a little compartment over here that goes down which would house your tools so you got uh two wrenches over here you got a 10 and 12 14 and 17. you got your spark plug remover nice touch royal alloy it says got this well i guess if you want to pull stuff it goes right in there so this part is plastic so chinelas check what can fit i'm a size 11 just for a matter of perspective so you can see of course you can fit your phone in there it's pretty sizable nice strip here so even the detail here i'm digging look at that very very classic looking so what's also awesome about this is the fact that it's got abs <laughs> there's abs right there so that's great over at the back and over there you got abs too so that's what the engine looks like. Okay, upon special request, we po natin ang mga natin from Royal Alloy, and we have Mac Andrew. Yo, you have a rapper <laughs> vibe. Pa -pa -ra -pa 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 -ra. <laughs> We're gonna show the engine. I gotta see the engine. Padali ba tanggalin yung side panel? Madali lang po. Ayo kasi magkalkal eh. Ito na lang sa panel. ako pa. So looking at the upholstery, very nice, very elegant, and it feels good. Now you're gonna see some black splotches over here. It's part of the design. Ganyan talaga siya. And at first I thought it was like my own stains. Alam yun, but it's not. It looks nice too. Nice touch to it. Okay, Mr. Mac. Andrew, okay t-shirt ma. Shout out tayo. Okay, OZ, the original Zandro. <laughs> okay, so ano una natin gagawin dito? What's the first thing we gotta take out to take out the side panel? Ah, meron po tayong nuts dito na gis. Okay. Isa. Philips ko, tapos merong eight na nuts sa likod. That is the second one. And our third, hila pa taas. Tapos meron siya dito Connector na signal light. Ah, okay, just pull that out so you can take out the whole thing. Ah, okay. Alright, so ito na po ang ating engine. So this is the GTS HPE. This is a 278cc engine and you can find this power plant also in Vespas in their GT series. Wala kang makikita na tatak na Piaggio dito but according to reports and according to the manufacturer of uh, Royal Alloy, this is identical. It is exactly, it is identical as that. So, I'm not quite sure if it's a, a whole OEM thing that there's a supplier of this engine to Piaggio and Royal Alloy. I honestly don't know yet. But essentially, what you see here is what you're going to see in the GT series of Vespa. So, looking at the frame over here, you can see the similarities in terms of the chassis of how this looks like in comparison to uh, Lambretta. Your tube frame right there under. Tube frame, tube frame, tube frame. You got dual shocks for the Royal Alloy there here and over there so look at how they laid it out you know everything's positioned nicely abs gas tank and all of that so so that's what it looks like pretty neat ice naman your harness so ito po yung ating gas tank it is made of steel i would think that you know maybe it would be better if they put a plastic gas tank para wala ka na iniintinding kalawang in the future the whole body i'm confident naman that you know, it's gonna hold its own through time against rust because of modern technology and because of how people paint nowadays, you know, it's much thorough. And I already know that yung pintura dito is nice and thick and done right. So that's what it looks like. You can see here how these vents, of course, would help cool the engine. Yeah, this is liquid cooled. So uh, we're not worried too much about heat. Okay, just so to show you what it looks like, you know, let's wipe it out. Just so you can see what it would potentially look like when it's nice and clean. And as you can imagine, I've been riding around in the rain too. Tamad po na eh, no? Okay na yan! Ta-da! First a mic, then a half cigarette Singing Kathy's Clown that's the man she's married to now That's the girl that he takes around town She appears composed, so she is, I suppose Who Riding around with a royal alloy does bring a lot of Hey, look at me vibe It's obviously a looker 
can't critique rideability much. Suspension is alright, it's balanced, and behaving the way scoots of this design should, only better. The engine naturally gives a lot of pep in the riding experience, you'll never get this pull from the older ones. Again, yeah, purists wouldn't care for this pull, but to regular Joes who like classic looking bikes, this energy will be appreciated. Gasoline consumption, I got about 30.9110 kpl. That is an absolute wall wall mode. Right, tight to uh, tight the brakes of the Royal Alloy. I'm gonna try the front first, slowly first, gently squeeze. More. Okay, yeah, I can definitely feel the ABS kicking in. So the ABS is chucking along, it's not uh, consistent. That's how it pumps. Okay, so front braking is safe, it's fine, you're gonna stop. Let's try the rear now. Okay. Rear will take. Gentle stop for the rear. It's not skidding, which is good. Let's try both. About 50 pumps. Okay, more. Okay, great. Now, the braking of the Royal Alloy, I would say you'd have to stop earlier. Um, you'd have to remember this body is not made of plastic, so it's not as light. And I will say that the braking is not as strong and abrupt. Yes, it is safe, but you're gonna have to anticipate and press earlier. So that said, what if it's an emergency somebody crosses? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. So if you wanna stop, don't do any of that late braking stuff. Yes, it's gonna stop, but don't expect like super stopping power like if you had a scooter made of plastic. Lambretta's moto heritage and culture runs deep and it will be forever intertwined with Vespa. It's just how it came to be. And now, another route has taken hold in the classic scooter community. If you love classic looking bikes and can appreciate modern conveniences found in the here and now, then the Royal Alloy is very, very hard to ignore. It's got a lot of what matters. And it looks great. Welcome to the country, Royal Alloy. This is Zach from Machina Moto Features. Ciao. Oh